could swim faster than we're sailing, going probably the same speed as the shark would migrate. <laughs> yeah, or a turtle. The crossing sucked. 20 knots of wind, you just have to pound into it for seven days straight. You just don't feel quite right. You feel a little sick. It's just, it's just exhausting. It's one of those things where we've lost count of how many days we've been at sea. I remember somebody yelling, land ho, and you see in the horizon this ghostly shape of San Cristobal, the big island. When the hook goes down, you just get this sense of relief. We made it. We recognize now that animals have enormous home ranges migrating between Coiba and Galapagos, Cocos and Malpelo, and we have to give them safe passage. Fishing fleets are sitting there right outside the park boundaries, and the sharks do not know what a marine protected area is. So when they go from here to Mao Paulo or here to Coiba, they're susceptible to the commercial fishing industry. And we have to bring that story to life. One of the great gifts of having this floating platform is the team that we're able to assemble. And the access that we have to the Galapagos Archipelago right now is unheard of. But really, we are nine people on a boat that's designed for six or seven. It's going to be a big challenge. Three minutes to supper if everybody's kind of ready. We have our own crew, Lucas Bustamante, who's advising us on the conservation efforts. Javier, who is one of the great divers in the world. We have a scientist on board, Sophia Green, and she's here to collect data that verifies that animals migrate between these archipelagos. And we're here to tell the story. Lucas was able to make the case to get us permits granted that nobody else gets. We can go almost everywhere. Every expedition has its issues. Instantly, as soon as we arrive, compressor that's been sort of the foundation of all our underwater filming work caught on fire. We could not fill tanks. But that looks bad. That looks like the whole thing's melted at the top. Yes. It might actually be a game changer. This is our biggest setback yet as far as like it shuts all our diving in. If you go checking in these balconies, in these steps, you can look for white tips. All right. You can look for my... But it's good. I mean, it's good news. Yeah. But it dawned on me. There's still our rebreathers. And we have Javier, who's a rebreather specialist who's dove most of the best dives in the Galapagos. We're turning around and getting in the platform. So you would take almost a spot over this spot. What I do on the rebreather, no matter current, whatever it is, I jump here. This is the first time really that we're breaking out rebreathers, essentially created for military use. It allows you to have bubbleless silent diving and allows you to stay down for a long time. There's also an element of danger to them, and we have friends who have died uh, in rebreather accidents, so it's not without its worries, but it'll allow us to get the films and the photographs that we need. We're gonna jump here, all right, close to the rock. We're gonna get down, and we're gonna wait there for 20 minutes or so. Like trying to be quiet, and then hopefully the hammers come by. Yes. rebreather allows you to be completely silent and stealth. And as soon as you let an animal dictate the encounter, you're setting yourself up for a success. Hammerhead sharks had these sort of scouts come out and look at us. They did four or five passes. Before you know it, you got a wall of 60 on you. It's just them feeling comfortable with your presence. It is just so magical. You know it's time to get out of the water and you just don't want to, you know? <laughs> because just around the corner, there might just be another school of hammerheads. Right. 
Our mission here is super simple, to collect data that verifies that animals migrate between these archipelagos. And it's a very good team of science and photography and filmmaking, all for the purpose of creating more protections in this area. So part of the study that we do here is tracking these animals, specifically these sharks. We place acoustic tags on these animals so that we can tell where they go once they leave the Galapagos Marine Reserve. I have a whale shark appearing on the screen that doesn't exist in my data. I don't know where that whale shark came from. When they leave, they're out in the open ocean and open to threats. You can imagine how many of these sharks are actually falling into nets daily. Tagging a whale shark is no easy feat. We are diving in some of the toughest conditions in the world. Currents can be absolutely brutal, but we need to know as much as we can about them in order to protect them. diving at 30 meters deep, where these animals appear from the depths. You'd think you'd see an animal that size, you know, approaching you. But sometimes you see them right when they're next to you. And you have to open up this clamp underwater, catch up to the dorsal fin. But the idea is not to disturb her natural behavior, so we don't want to block her path. We'll swim over her head and wait for her dorsal fin to come right beneath us. And then just slowly clamp it with pressure. And then we watch this whale shark drift away. To be part of an expedition like the one here in Sea Legacy is an incredible opportunity. It puts us out there to do the real science, as well as to share the imagery of what's going on with the world. I love it that Sophia, Lucas, Javier, they're all locals and they're here because they care. If we can help further their message, we can help them bridge the gap between scientific knowledge and a global audience. These animals are going between these open ocean archipelagos and they are vulnerable. The Galapagos is a place like no other and it's a world jewel. And if we cannot protect a place like the Galapagos Islands, how are we going to protect the rest of the world? To this point, this expedition has been incredibly successful. We have all the visuals and all the assets that we need. Now we regroup and we head to the west of the Galapagos where we're going after the very unique endemic species.